where the heck are all of the small DAC cables? I don't know, do you? They're not on Ubiquiti's website. Well, I know of a place that has some at fs.com. They specifically make some DAC cables that you could use for your Ubiquiti equipment or really any router or switching equipment uh, that is available on the market. There's a huge drop down list that allows you to select pretty much everything that you could possibly want for all brands but I specifically requested ones for Ubiquity. Now, originally I wanted 0.5 meters, but there was a mix up in communication and they sent me two five meter long DAC cables. There shouldn't be any problem with this length. Um, it's well within the uh, range of can do 10 gigabit per second. Uh, we're not gonna see that because I have a one gigabit switch that I'm connecting uh, this to and then to the 10 gig switch. So, I don't know, whatever. This should just work. So we're gonna try that out. We have two cables that we're gonna do in aggregate mode, and hopefully we can just remove the existing cables, stick these in, and everything just works. But I don't anticipate that happening, but we shall see. And I went ahead and asked them to send over a couple of transceivers that allow us to plug in some uh, copper ethernet cables into. So these are SFP plus to uh, ethernet. So these are pretty cool. We'll plug those in the 10 gig switch as well, just to see if they work. I'm sure they will. Um, this will be really cool, because now I can actually expand. you. Uh, using these and copper ethernet. So let's go ahead and get these plugged in and see what happens. All I'm doing here is removing the transceivers that I've had previously as well as the optic cable and then just switching that in place for my uh, crap ton long DAC cables from FS. Pretty simple stuff. I just got done plugging everything in and we're just going to simply try and hit the Unify UI login page and see if that works. And it does, it came up immediately. So that's pretty good. We're just gonna take a look at the uh, 16 port switch here. And we can actually see that um, the SFP port is already detected. And we see that the vendor is FS. Uh, let's see if I can click that. Nope, it goes away. So the vendor is FS and we can see the serial number, the part number, basically all the information about this. Um, it doesn't seem to be reporting any information about the temperature or output power, um, which is new. I'm not sure if that should be working or not. Now, I suspect the reason why this is actually working um, right off the bat is because I already have the link speed set uh, to one gigabit per second versus auto negotiate. Uh, typically, you have to, or at least in the past with Ubiquity, you always had to set or manually set the speed and and the auto negotiation speed never actually worked. But it looks like uh, this worked right off the bat. So I wonder if maybe after an update, this information will um, like the, the stats for the temperature and power usage will actually um, fill out. Uh, let's go ahead and check our 16 port switch. And yep, same problem. So we can see that the vendor is FS here and we do see the voltages and currents and stuff, all that stuff is not um, actually registering. So we're gonna try and update these and see what happens. Okay, so our 10 gig switch finally updated. Um, now we're gonna just go back and check to see if we got information from those DACs. And it doesn't look like the DAC um, is giving us any new information. Uh, which is kind of a shame. I don't think it's a big deal. I've honestly never looked at that stuff before in the past, and I didn't even know it was a thing until just now when we just happened to be looking at it. So that's not something I'm gonna lose some sleep over. Um, but that's pretty cool that it just seemed to work like that. So unfortunately, even though those cables are aggregated together, I have no way to really test from the one gig switch to the 10 gig switch if I'll actually get two gigabit per second transfers because that switch is limited to one gigabit per second. And I don't really have any other devices that I could aggregate uh, two ports together and then do that kind of test, unfortunately. Um, I do have some spare NICs laying around that do have dual NICs and I think I could set it up, but unfortunately right now, due to the nature of my hardware and how everything is set up, that's not something that's actually possible for me to do. So unfortunately we can't test that, but I'm sure it's fine. Uh, I don't suspect there to be any problems uh, there whatsoever. But just to be safe, I'll do a speed test and we'll see what happens with that. I don't think that's really gonna prove anything, uh, but just in case, we'll go ahead and take a look at 
uh, a couple of those. And well, as one would suspect, there's really nothing to be gleamed here from these speed tests, although we can confirm that we are getting near gigabit speeds. Uh, I'm sure there's some AT&T provider issues going on that are preventing me from hitting my full throughput, but that's okay. Uh, we're getting pretty dang close, and these are the speeds I would typically see anyway, uh, up and down. So the first test is obviously with Wi-Fi Man, uh, provided by Ubiquiti, and the second one that is just going to flash up here is through Fast.com, uh, through Netflix's speed test provider. All right, let's uh, move on. Okay, so with the DAC cables out of the way, we'll go ahead and take a look at their transceivers. Again, this is a SFP plus to Ethernet uh, transceiver. So we're gonna plug this in, get the MacBook hooked up to that, and see what kind of speeds we get when transferring to our Unraid server, and maybe just a speed test for fun too. Wow, this is uh, kind of hard to open. Right, let's go get this plugged in. I'm gonna put the FS receiver into the first slot right here. Um, this should work immediately without any configuration needed on my part. The Mac Mini is plugged into uh, port 10 here. So if I trace this cable, that takes us to where it is plugged in switch. And I'm just gonna switch it around the transceiver, obviously. And we should be good to go. The light is indicating that's already at 10 gigabit ethernet, or I'm sorry, 10 gig connection. So I think we're good. Let's go do some tests. Okay, so we're going to take a look at the configuration of our 16 port switch. And as we saw just a second ago, this automatically detected and is running at the full 10 gig speed. Um, here's all the information. There's no voltage, current, or temperature readouts for this. There does seem to be some output. Um, so let us do a transfer over to the Unraid server and just see what kind of speeds we can get there. All right, so all we're gonna do is we're gonna take this uh, about four gigabyte video file here and drop it onto our Unraid server. And we'll kind of watch how quickly the speeds jump up here in the top right corner. So uh, let's do that and see what we get. And it's done. So that ended pretty quickly. It looks like we topped out at around 688 megabytes per second. Um, that could be faster. I don't think that's because of the adapter. If I had to guess, that's actually uh, just because the video file was really small. Um, so let's try and go the opposite direction from Unraid to our um, Mac book, or I'm sorry, our Mac mini and see what we get here. Okay, so we are downloading a video from our Unraid server that's about 47, almost 48 gigabytes in size. And looks like we peaked out at about a download speed of 350 megabytes per second. And uh, I think that's because that video file actually lives on the array. Um, so we are basically maxed out at the read speed. Yeah, the no, I'm sorry. The yeah, the read speeds of the array, and we're not going to be able to go any faster than our current speed of 212 megabytes per second, uh, which I think is pretty typical um, compared to uh, the previous setup. So I think it's all working appropriately, and I'm not really too concerned with um, the DAC or not the DAC, the transceiver working incorrectly. I think I think it is working as it's supposed to. And uh, yeah, it seems, it seems it seems good. I can't really complain. Cable quality wise, I would say this is about on par with every other brand cable I've interacted with, uh, including Ubiquiti themselves. I don't see anything that just, you know, stands out immediately to me as poor construction or quality. Uh, they do bend and hold their shape uh, pretty easily. I don't know if you guys can see that very well. Um, which is kind of scary, but I think that's normal for most cables uh, because you can do things like cable training over time. And the actual um, modules themselves seem to be pretty much exactly the same as every other brand I've ever interacted with from Finisar to Intel to Ubiquiti's own. And they seem to be made from the same material and the same quality altogether. So there's really not much else to say about those. I think they'll last and I could see myself definitely buying um, these things in the future as needed. The actual DAC cables FS sent me are these right here. So this is the 10 gig 
SFP plus passive, direct attach, copper twin nax cable. Um, I, again, I had originally request, requested 0.5 meters, but they ended up sending over uh, five meters instead. Uh, not a big deal, but you know, whatever. We could still we could still use them. And what's really cool with FS's site is you can actually um, scroll through tons and tons and tons of different brands. And of course, you know, Ubiquiti is all the way at the, bro at the bottom. And they will make these cables and send them to you in short order. And that's really all the customization options you have uh, from here. And then of course, the other things they sent me um, are these fiber optic transceivers. So we have the 10 gig SFP plus ones. And I got, I believe these. Okay, yeah, I got these. These are the 80 meter modules. Um, so they, they're $84 each. You probably don't need these at home. Uh, again, I just kind of did it because it was a, a, an option available to me and they allowed me to choose those. Um, so again, we can come here and customize these and select Ubiquiti, which is all the way towards the bottom. And what's really cool too is you can also uh, add in some operating temperatures here. Uh, I'm not sure like how the device would be different with this, but that is an option uh, for anyone who's interested. And of course you could add your own custom label. Um, that's not something that I took advantage of. Uh, unfortunately, I kind of wish I did so we could get, you know, maybe SPX labs here or something. Uh, but yeah, these are the ones that I ordered. Um, I think if I were to buy these for myself, I would step down to the 30 meter ones more than likely because these are a little bit cheaper at $65 each. Now, I believe Ubiquity actually sells these um, a lot cheaper. So here are their DACs, uh, not, not the same thing as their transceivers. These are $20 per meter, um, not too bad. Let's see here, let's go back. Okay, so yeah, Ubiquity actually sells the RJ45 uh, 10 gig transceivers um, themselves. They look pretty, pretty, pretty freaking similar to the FS ones. Uh, these are $65 each while uh, FS has them for the same price. So that's pretty neat. Um, but the one thing that Ubiquity doesn't really tell us here, let's see, yep, actually they do. So it tells the distances up to 30 meters and then one gigabit up to 100 meters. So that's actually pretty cool. Uh, so that seems to be pretty standard. But with FS, we have the option to increase our 10 gig distances up to 80 meters, which is pretty freaking cool. I'll probably end up doing a follow-up video later on where I can actually take advantage of this uh, 80 meters. Well, technically I did, but uh, I don't know. We, we have options. We have the flexibility now, which is pretty cool. All right, everyone, that pretty much wraps up this video. I honestly am not 100% sure what else there is left to say about these products. Uh, if you are at all interested in ordering some of these things for yourself at your home or office or wherever it may be, there are some links below for these specifically that you'll find in the video description. And I would highly recommend checking that out if you uh, need some SFP DAX, or SFP plus DAX, or whatever kind of DAX, or any kind of uh, networking cables at all. FS seems to have a lot in stock and available, and everything that I've looked at so far uh, seems like it's ready to ship. And yeah, so hopefully more to come with FS and some of these things in the future. Uh, and as always, I want to thank you all for watching and I want to thank FS for sending this stuff over to me uh, to test out and take a look at. So I'll see you all soon. Peace.